we know the number one cause of death in men under 50 is suicide. And I think when you think about that, you, you pause. That is unbelievable. How can it be that the number one cause of death is something so preventable like mental health? And I think when we think about that, it shows that all of us have a duty here. So I think the first thing we have to remember is if you're somebody who yourself are worried about your mental health, you're a male, you're saying, you know, I don't quite think I'm doing OK. The first thing I would say is there's never a point when you're too late or too early to seek help. If you say, Do you know, I, I'm not quite sure, maybe I'm just a bit more anxious than normal, come and speak to us. But if you're saying, you know, I feel really bad, I think I'm at the end, I, I can't do anything, still reach out because we're here to support you. And guess what? There are things we can do to help you get through this. Sometimes when you're at your darkest, when it's at your most difficult time, that's actually when we say, do you know what? There's so many things we can do to support you. And we're going to come in and we're going to give you as much support and help as you need. And so that's the first thing I would say. If you're suffering, don't suffer in silence. Come forward. It will be the best thing you ever do. And you will thank yourself later for it. The second thing I would say is, of course, if you're somebody who is worried about somebody else, if you're seeing a friend who's suffering, if you're seeing someone you care about who isn't coping as well, then ask them. Don't worry about keeping it in. Don't worry about trying to pick up the signs and, and trying to uh, read about it and say, well, I think you could have this. I think it could be that. Sometimes we get so worried about the diagnosis, we forget to say, well, is there a problem in the first place? And I think when we ask each other, there's a lovely thing I always talk about, which is asking twice. You know, when I say to you, how are you doing? You say, you know, I'm great. I'm good. Everything's happy. But hold on. Is, is, is everything really happy? Because we're in the middle of a pandemic here. It's not that great. Well, how are you really? When you say that second question, suddenly people pause and they go, well, yeah, it, well, it's been tough. You know, actually, I'm, 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 I'm not coping as well as I thought. And suddenly that conversation opens up. One of the things we've talked about and I know that we're aiming to develop is safe spaces to talk and listen. And the reason why that's so powerful is once you give somebody the option, the opportunity to speak, to speak out and say, you know, I'm actually finding it really tough. I'm finding it really hard. I'm, my mood's been lower. Just in that moment, just being there for that one conversation can change them completely. It can give them a space to say, you know, all these things have been going on. And that outlet has proven to be therapeutic in and of itself. It's part of why we have talking therapy. So if you're worried about someone, reach out, give them a call. And actually, when you say to them, do you know what? It's been rubbish for me too. I'm finding it quite tough as well. Suddenly we go, shoot, we're all together in this. I recognize that I'm not alone because one of the biggest things with mental health is the feeling that I'm the only one suffering. That I'm the only one going through this. But actually, we're all, to some degree, suffering with some mental illness. We all have some challenge going on. And, and so I, I would say, don't worry about trying to diagnose it. Don't worry about trying to work out what's going on. Be there. Give that space.